I have made my choice to be here on the front lines, you know, years ago when I decided to become a registered nurse. My name is Carissa Colbreth. I'm the Medical Director for Infectious Disease Diagnostics in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey guys, it's Dr. Chi, your board certified family medicine physician who works full time as a hospitalist. Hello, my name is Brianna Weeks. I am a clinical nurse specialist and advanced practice nurse located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My role in the COVID-19 response is uh, to direct the laboratory uh, that is responsible for doing some of the testing for this virus. Um, my laboratory has seen unprecedented volumes um, of testing in just under three weeks. We performed over uh, 10,000 tests for the virus. It's been a struggle to still have that caring feeling with your patients and still be on alert. Like if you cough or you have a fever, like I gotta protect myself because one, I have a family I wanna go home to. I have children, I have a husband. I have all these aspects that I'm concerned about as a healthcare provider. And I know you're a patient and I wanna care for you, but I also have to care for myself. We are asked to prolong um, wearing supplies that would normally be one time use only or um, usually you know a limited um, number of hours you are allowed to wear it so we're asked to prolong the use of those items um, we're asked to uh, on a day-to-day -day basis conserve our personal protective equipment or ppe as you've been hearing on the news um, to really think through how we can conserve those on a long-term basis um, because the supply is just not guaranteed. I'm taking great uh, lengths to try to uh, protect myself and protect my family um, if from myself. Washing my hands all of the time. Um, I don't wear uh, the shoes that I wear at work. I take them off before I walk into the house. Um, taking off um, the, the clothes that I'm wearing before I go into the house because I don't want to expose my family and those who I love. Every day I'm being super intentional about my self-care practices, whether that means turning off social media, turning off the news, um, lighting candles, taking deep breath, being forgiving of myself and also being kind to others, um, extending grace um, where normally we would have short tempers with one another because of the stresses that we're all under. If I can't take care of myself, I definitely can't take care of a patient. So doing things at home for me after I get off work or even when I'm off, I normally do workouts already, but now I'm integrating yoga and meditation in my daily life because this has been an overwhelming experience. My personal self-care um, involves um, time in prayer. Uh, it involves time meditating. Um, it involves some time outside here in New Mexico. Uh, this, it's a beautiful springtime. Um, and so it's a nice time to get outside, even if it's just in my backyard. The grass is still growing and there's butterflies um, and birds chirping. Um, it, it feels in, in a way that they're oblivious to all of this. And sometimes that oblivion is necessary necessary to be able to unplug. I have made my choice to be here on the front lines, you know, years ago when I decided to become a registered nurse. And so I show up um, and I show up to work my full self, my authentic self, and, and give what I know that um, God has given me to give to care for people who, who desperately need it. There are doctors and nurses who are putting their lives on the line with this pandemic and have unfortunately died from this because they know at the end of the day, they wanted to save a life. And unfortunately it took their own. And that's something that does scare me and it scares my other fellow colleagues. But if we do what we need to do, we know we were doing it for the right reasons. And that reason is to save lives. As a black woman, um, I, I feel the stress for my community, knowing that my community faces many additional comorbidities. There's other underlying health conditions that plague our communities even more. And we recognize in moments like this that a health disparity um, in, in a pandemic is just amplified. The number one thing you can do to support people 
people who are on the front lines, healthcare workers, hospital nurses, respiratory therapists, the number one thing you can do to help us is to stay home. We are trying to lessen the spread of this disease as to not overwhelm the healthcare system. I encourage you all to reach out to your loved ones, keep to continue speaking to them, even though it is hard to not see them, but stay away from those who are high risk because you never know, you just never know.